Hello YouTube, I'm Josh Strife Hayes and this is a quick video guide to Epic Temple of the Spider or Temple of the Spider Master. So I've got five people in my party right now. We have three DPS, a tank and a healer. Going to click on Epic Dungeon, go down to Temple of the Spider Master difficulty and queue up for it. It's quite a complicated dungeon with a few mechanics that are unique to it, so I'm going to explain each of them as we get to them. It's going to be quite a slow run because I want to make sure I'm really thorough with what we go over in this dungeon. The final boss is quite difficult. Epic Temple of the Spider is ran quite often because you can, if you're very good, run through it very, very, very quickly and get some rather decent drops at the end of it. The final boss is the only thing that's going to give us anything of an issue, and I'm going to hopefully show you how you can make that quite easy. If you have any questions, you can normally find me on Twitch under Josh Strife Hayes. So as soon as we arrive in the dungeon, we're going to run forward, and you're greeted by mobs almost instantly. Some guys down there. Those spitting spiders can be problems. They can hit a lot of damage onto unprepared groups. So you want to make sure you get rid of those guys as fast as possible. You can see that my health has started to drop already. One of the tricks about running Epic Temple of the Spider is all the mobs you meet here will do a lot of damage to you. So killing them fast is a really, really, really important thing. There's more spiders on this bridge over here. Hopefully we're going to take them all out as fast as we can. I want to kill anything before it has a chance to do damage to me. This room is the first room that will really challenge you. As you turn right, you'll see a drider in the center of the room. More ads are going to spawn as you kill things. This is the first place that lots of parties wipe. So really go for it. Run straight in and do as much damage as you can. I'm getting most of my life back from my lifesteal. So believe it or not, the safest place for me is in the middle of loads of enemies doing some AoE. The spiders have a web attack that can pin you to the floor and immobilize you for a while. It's not deadly, but it is annoying. If you wipe in this room, don't worry. Just keep going. Talk to your team, work out some new tactics. All go in at the same time and make sure the tank is taking the aggro of whatever's causing you the most trouble. If you can survive this room, you can survive the rest of the dungeon. You're going to head down and over the bridge. There are some more enemies over the bridge. Nothing different to what we've dealt with before. So run forward and DPS. Once you've cleared over the bridge, head through here. Now you can, if you want to, walk all the way around, or you can just turn left and drop off this ledge here. Dropping off the ledge will take a small amount of fall damage, but you'll get to where you need to be quicker. Deal with these mobs down here the same way you've dealt with every other mob. And once you've cleared those, continue down, activate the lever on the wall, and head through the first door. You're going to arrive at your first bonfire. We're nearly at the first mini boss. Before the mini boss, you'll see these guys running up to greet you on the ramp. The priestess over here is the ad with the most health, so get the whole team to take her down. Once you've taken her down, just before this bridge, load of spiders. A few more spiders are going to come and join us off the rocks over there. And all these spiders are a sign of the first thing to come, the first mini boss. We go across the bridge, have a short cinematic, introducing us to the first mini boss of this dungeon. He's going to spawn some adds, and he's going to do damage. Apart from that, this guy has nothing special about him. Stay behind him, dodge out the way of the red, dodge occasionally to avoid his attacks, and DPS him as fast as you can. When he gets to around half health, you'll see more guys start to spawn over here, Blade Masters and Warriors. Blade Masters will come in for the final boss later as well. It can be a problem if you don't deal with them quickly. You'll see that I've left my guys to deal with the boss, and I'm sorting this Blade Master out. There's nothing really special about this guy apart from you will get ads running at you from the bridge. If you can keep them all together like I'm doing now and DPS them as a group, the whole thing will go a lot faster. 
After you've killed him, check to see if you've dropped anything. This guy luckily has. And carry on through the door. Through the door we've got a couple of warriors, a few more spitting spiders, and over there behind them will be a larger drider. If you aggro everything at once and it all attacks you, you will take a lot of damage. So sending the tank in first here is a great idea. You see that drider has a huge floor covering attack. But we're going to make sure we take it down. Now there is a way to skip these guys if you run around the edge. We're not going to do that because as a team and as a player, it's going to be really beneficial for you just to learn to kill things as a group. Skipping them is possible, killing them is sometimes quicker. When we've taken it down, here's a bit where skipping them is quicker. We could run up the steps and go right, or we can go left and hug this little gap here. We're going to hug the gap and head through, hopefully not aggro any of the mobs behind us, and we'll arrive at the second mini-boss. Nothing complex to start off with, run up and DPS her. She has several attacks. The first one just there is a large fan of knives covering the cone area in front of her. And as we get her down, she will spawn ads. We've got spiders and we've got some guys who have got pretty powerful attacks. There they are, they spawned in the corner. Now a lot of the spiders, remember, have that web attack where they're gonna pin you to the floor. So getting rid of these guys is not only helpful for the team, it's going to make sure that one part of the floor doesn't get covered in three or four different AoE attacks from the enemies. As the adds run in, keep everything together and kill them as a group. You see that I left the assassin alive there and he nearly got a big web attack off. Once Harbrun is dead, check her corpse to see if she's dropped anything and then we can carry on. Luckily she has. There's a chest here you can open. As usual, you can tell it's not a mimic because the loot icon appears in my aiming receptacle. If the aiming receptacle stayed as a circle, it would be a mimic. We carry on to the next bonfire and a few adds and spiders. Nothing that you haven't dealt with before. DPS them all down as fast as you can and then carry on through the dungeon. If you stick to the wall on the right here, you can avoid that assassin. I'm going to aggro it now just to give my team something to do. You can avoid by sticking to the right, or you can kill quickly. Thankfully, I'm running with a really high DPS team, so I'm not worried about them being able to take it down. Now here's a part where avoiding a mob is a good idea. If you run to the left all the way around here and stick to the edge, you don't aggro some spiders that will appear in the middle. If you run through the center like I have done now, you'll get these phase spiders. Phase spiders can, for a lower DPS group, be a real problem. They take a while to take down and can do some serious damage. Avoiding them by heading around the left is possible, or if you're running with a mid to high DPS group, you can aggro them and take them down. They can teleport all around the room and attack anyone. That's why they're so annoying. You don't know where they're going to end up next. After you've dealt with the phase spiders, run over. See this log here, this huge rock, this will be standing up. You press F to push it down, you run over it. Now instead of running all the way up, just turn left and drop off halfway. Dropping off halfway, you're going to drop into a pretty big fight. Over here, there are some mobs of enemies. If left unchecked, or if one person tries to take them all on and you're not geared for it, you will definitely die. So work with your team, get them all together, and take them out. Once these guys are dealt with, we're almost at the final boss. There are just a few more rooms to go through first. Another lever on the wall opens this door bringing us to the next bonfire. Now down on the floor there you'll see loads of spiderlings keeping them all together and they're easy to take down because they don't have much health each however they can all hit you at the same time and if you haven't got much health or if your defense isn't up to it you will take a large amount of damage. Over there we have the lesser brood mother. Once you kill the lesser brood mother she's going to spawn some minions from inside her 
So we're going to try and make sure that even after she dies, we keep the AOE damage up to take care of that brood straight away. You should see those minions spawn in a second. She goes down, and there's the brood swarm attacking us now. Not a problem. We knew it was going to happen. Continuing through this room, we turn slightly to the left. Don't fall down there. If you fall down there, you will die. Take the fight to the middle. There are several phase spiders and an arachnomancer in this room. It's a difficult, high DPS room. I'm going to hopefully lure everything to me, and as soon as it's on me, use my AoE to do as much damage to everything. This is a fight that really suits me, because I can hit everything at once. If you want, you can stay over by the bridge we entered from and simply lure enemies to you one by one. For a lower DPS group or a team just starting out, that's a really good idea. Once this room is clear, head through, we'll kill the final few mobs before we take on the boss. One or two mobs up on the hill, more spitting spiders, nothing you haven't dealt with before. Avoiding red is always a good idea. We push through and carry on. Take out the final mob that's waiting for us on here, just before the boss. And then we'll be at the final boss. Nice and simple so far. We've all known what we're doing. We go down the ramp and we're about to enter the boss room. Now this boss fight has two phases. The first phase is really simple. She will teleport around the room, attacking people and summoning minions and adds. Take out the spitting spiders quickly. They can do some damage to a lower DPS group. When you get a percentage of her health down, she will gain her health all the way back to full and transform into a spider. That's when the real mechanics of this fight are going to start. When she transforms into a spider, Keep DPSing her and keep dealing with the ads, but you'll also see two huge ghost spiders spawn in either corner. Those ghost spiders are going to shoot beams at her. The ghost spider that is uh, greenish blue is going to heal her, and the ghost spider that's red is going to hurt you. You want to stand in between those beams to make sure she doesn't get healed. Ideally, you want the tank to do this. We're just waiting for Elvis to step into the arena. And then we're going to talk through. I will explain the mechanics as they happen. This is not a difficult fight if the team all work together. If you let the ads stack up too quickly or you don't deal with them fast enough, they will let you know about it. Now the first thing Sindrith is going to do as soon as we come in is throw some knives at us. So I'm going to dodge straight away and hopefully avoid that attack. There's the knife attack we dodged. While she's in this phase, simply DPS her as fast as you can. Remember those blade masters from the mini boss earlier? They're going to make an appearance again. Over here, we see a spitting spider. I'm going to change my priority and focus on this for a bit, because if I don't do it, it will slowly wear away my health. Spitting spiders are a great thing to kill first. If you have two or three DPS in your party, assign one of them just to kill the spitting spiders. Now Sindrith herself, you're going to see webs all over this arena. A lot of enemies, including Sindrith, can fire webs that will stick you to the floor. It's hard to move and mobility can be difficult in this boss fight. Just keep dodging around and hitting her as and when you can. When we get her health down a little bit more, she'll gain all of it back and turn into a spider. That's when the difficult mechanics are going to start. I'm going to change my priority and focus on this Blade Master for a little bit, because I don't want him to become a problem later. Here are some more ads. You can see I wasn't kidding when I said if you don't take care of them, they're going to swarm you. 
Being in control of the situation is one of the most important things, no matter which boss you're taking on. She can teleport all over the room, so she's going to go from one side to another. Another reason why all these webs make her quite hard to kill. Now she's transformed. This is phase two of the fight. You'll see she's turned into a spider. This phase is both easier and harder. She's not going to move, so she's going to stay here. We can focus all of our DPS on her. Her attacks are quite dangerous, just don't stand in front of her. She'll hit you with a long beam, and she fires these horrible webs all over the room. What we're worried about is these two ghost spiders. This big blue one here, and that red one over there. The red one over there eventually is going to pick someone and aim at them with a beam, like they're doing now. When that happens, dodge as soon as those two lasers touch each other. This blue one is going to heal her with a beam. Now if I don't stand in between the beam and her, she's going to get a lot of her health back, and I don't want that. See the beam? I'm going to stand here in the way of it, and hopefully it hits me instead. I don't mind taking the damage, because it's much easier for me to get my health back than it is to carry on DPSing her. Apart from that, that's this fight. Deal with the adds as fast as you can, make sure the big blue spider and the big red spider are always you know, being taken care of, someone's always blocking one of the beams, someone's always dodging when the beam's on them, and kill her as fast as possible. It's not as complicated as it looks. There are three things going on here. I'm DPSing the boss, I'm killing the adds, and I'm being aware of what the two big spiders are doing. If you can do that, you'll be absolutely fine. It's not an intimidating fight. It does take a while if you have a team with lower DPS, and if she gets a few lucky hits on you, you can die. But go slow, take your time, dodge in the way, and slowly burn her down. Now I'm lucky enough to have a very, very good tank to take all these hits. Even if I wasn't in the way of the blue spider, I'm sure someone else would be. The great thing about her staying still is that you can focus all of your AoE attacks and anyone that has healing attacks can focus all of their healing attacks in one area and the whole team gets the advantage. It's a fight that really relies on teamwork. And because all of the adds come to her, and most of my attacks are AoE, I'm burning the adds down when they get close, without having to specifically focus on them. It's just a byproduct of the damage I'm doing anyway. When she gets to lower health, you'll see adds start to spawn more frequently. Like all these spiders slowly coming at us, and the blade masters joining up. The beam's on me, but if I dodge at the right time, I hopefully dodge out of the way. Keep DPSing her, Keep the adds under control, and make sure you know what those two ghost spiders are doing all the time. If you do that, you can survive this fight. Once you burn her all the way down, check to see if you're lucky enough to get a drop, and if you're not, head up to the treasure chest on the top. Climb the stairs, and use your epic chest key to open it. Choice of two rings and some seals. That's all there is to Epic Temple of the Spider. If you have any questions, you can find me on Twitch under Josh Strife Hayes. Thank you to my team. Now go and get some drops.